Hey, this is Billy from Fuse, and I'm here with uh, Jason Pierce, aka J Spaceman of the band Spiritualized, whose new album, Sweetheart, Sweet Light, is uh, already our pick for the best of 2012. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. My pleasure. So the first thing I realized when I'm listening to the new album is it's it's much poppier, in my, in my opinion. And I know that you've, um, in a few interviews, have spoken to kind of how you're embracing that. Can you kind of speak to that a little bit? That was the plan, and to kind of embrace the, the bit of spiritualize that I'm not so easy with you know I like the abstraction I like the distortion I like the kind of like trying to find another way of putting things but some songs no matter how much you throw them up in the air they the pieces land in the same way you know and and they kind of resist change and they were songs like too late and um, little girl off this album I kind of said well I'll go with that I'll put that together and that's what it's going to be and also I had to do a course of chemo when I was making this record and I thought that would make it easy on myself, you know, that, that pop music's going to be way more easy than trying to make a record that was kind of further out there. But it's not, it's the same, it's just as hard if not harder than making, all records are hard to make. You mentioned that you're undergoing chemo, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I've done some drugs in my time but I don't recommend them to anybody. <laughs> they have no redeeming qualities. Uh, that's about it, really. I knew I had to do it, though, you know. I figured if I wasn't in a studio and I was doing this from home, I didn't, nobody, I wasn't going to have a studio book that I wasn't in, you know. And I didn't tell the engineer, so I think when, when I just kind of fell asleep or disappeared for two days, I don't think he thought, you know, I just think he thought I was, that's how it was working with me. Are there any like particularly, <clears throat> excuse me, any particularly interesting stories that inspired some of the albums? I like the start of So Long You Pretty Things because it's written by my daughter and she's nine. She was nine when she wrote it. Like she just just brought it to you, like daddy. Yeah, she just this. started singing a song when it's you know, no big deal. I didn't sit her down and yeah. start, like management and start saying yeah. we, we gotta <laughs> do this, but. Um, and she has this kind of thing like the music of Daniel Johnston where you can say things at that age that are at, 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 once, at, at, at one turn childish and stupid, mm -hmm. but by being like that, stupid's the wrong word, but childish and kind of childlike, but by, but by being like that, they're so honest. When you perform live, you're always kind of off to the, off to the side and in the back and sitting down. Why that instead of standing front and center? People assume that what I hear, where you sit on stage, you hear the same as you hear out front, like you can hear all the instruments. Somebody said to a friend of mine, if you don't like music, you should become a viola player because you sit right in front of the trumpets and you can't hear anything else. And um, it's like that on stage. You don't, I don't hear the strings and I don't hear the choir like, like it's being mixed for me. Mm. I hear what's relative to my little environment. And so the only real way to connect with them is to see what they're doing to make them part of the show. And it's kind of to do with that, that I don't feel like, otherwise I feel like I'm just hearing my voice and guitar and it's kind of, and, and it's not about that, it's about playing music with other people. Even if you can't hear with great clarity what they're doing, it's about making music with these people. Mm.